All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am still here with Stormy. Um, so again, if you hear any purring, it's her. It's not me, I promise. So at this point, um, we have finished plotting our data. And we are going to create a line graph. And as you can probably already tell, just from when you plotted your data, going to get something that looks very similar on the left and right side of your graph. And this, there is actually a reason this is happening. Okay, so there's two things that I'd like to point out to you. Um, the first has to do with your x-axis. And notice that this is distance from the oceanic ridge in kilometers. That means that zero is the actual oceanic ridge. And what you will notice is that as you move away from the ridge in either direction, the rocks are going to match. So the rocks that are 20 kilometers to the left and 20 kilometers to the right of the ridge are going to match. The same as rocks a thousand miles to the right of the kilometer and a thousand miles to the left of the, of the ridge are going to match. The other line that I want to orient you to is this Y zero. This is going to become important for the next step. So this is our virtual geomagnetic pole. Um, and basically the North Pole wanders around up at the northern part of our Earth. It doesn't really stay in one fixed um, spot. And if you get really good with maps and with hiking, you actually have to take that wandering into account. So every time it is in a positive number, we are going to call this normal polarity. And when it's down here in the negative, we are going to call this reversed polarity. And what we are looking for is actually every single time our line graph crosses the orange zero line. Now I'm going to do this in some different colored pens just so that you're more able to clearly see. You do not need to swap colors out on this. Okay, so I've got a cross on that line there and that's gonna come up. I'm going to draw a straight line. The same here. Crosses again. So notice what I'm going to do. And I, again, am just alternating this color so that you are more able to clearly see. I think that does it and what you should notice right away is that again we have something that's almost identical on both sides of the zero line or on both sides of the oceanic ridge and our directions tell us to shade in periods of normal polarity in black so remember normal polarity is going to be when we are up in this positive so this would be a normal polarity and that is down here in the negative. So that is not going to be normal polarity. It's going to come back up here. And then it sinks below. And then we've got a big stretch of normal polarity in here. I know that that didn't come out as neatly as it could have. 
Um, all right, and then we're back down into the negative, and then this comes back up into normal. Followed by negative, followed again by normal. And so when we look at this, we are able to see that rocks on either side of this mid-oceanic ridge are going to match. And that is because this new seafloor is coming up at this ridge and then it is going to be pushing outward. So that is why your rocks 20 kilometers on the left are going to match the rocks 20 kilometers on the right all the way out. They basically become mirror images of themselves. Now this was really important for the eventual development of the plate tectonics theory because it gave us evidence that new sea floor was actually being created. And so if new seafloor was actually being created, it meant that old seafloor had to be disappearing someplace else because otherwise Earth would be getting bigger. And last time I checked, Earth wasn't getting bigger and Earth wasn't getting smaller. So that means that the rates that the seafloor is being created must exactly match the rate at which the seafloor is being recycled. That's our next big step in the puzzle.